Good morning and welcome to Detroit Wants to Know. This week we're at Mike's Fresh Market once again, Livering Way in Seven Mile. My friends, there's an epidemic in our city. It's an epidemic of marijuana provisioning centers. This summer we visited MindRight, which is really well run, really clean out there on Mack Avenue on the east side, but there are a lot of them all over the place. Things like Grass Station, Chronic House. This stuff is out of control. We talked to Dennis Knizek, who was trying at the state level to regulate these, but now we have one of our city council members that is actually doing it. My friends, Councilman James Tate from District 1. Councilman Tate. Good to see you. It's good to finally have you on the Joint yeah, Wants to Know. I'm excited. I'm excited. Thanks yeah, you're not afraid me. like some of your fellow members. <laughs> no. I call them chicken because they know I'm going to ask them some stuff. Yeah. I want to applaud you for what you're trying to do with regulating the marijuana provisioning centers in Detroit. Tell us about this ordinance you've introduced. Yeah, so this ordinance, essentially, the main thing it does is it, it, it allows for a pathway for the dispensaries to exist because I recognize that there are individuals who actually need this medicine. I've talked to patients all around, and they've, they've had medical benefit. But it also, on the other hand, makes sure that it uh, reduces this oversaturation that we have in the city of Detroit. So there's a, one portion of it for the licensing. There's another portion for the zoning. The licensing tells those folks who want to get into the business what you got to do, uh, before and during and even after in terms of teardown. But the zoning is where we get a lot of pushback. The zoning is where you're going to reduce the numbers within the city of Detroit. And so what we're saying is that you cannot have more than one of these establishments for every two thousand feet. You also need to be a thousand feet away from schools, parks, churches, and, uh, and libraries. So that right now leaves us in a situation where there are uh, certainly enough space in the industrial areas, but then very few among the main thoroughfares, but they do have a pathway for existence. Well, wait a minute. I've seen places where there's less than 2,000 feet oh, yeah? apart right now. So how do you choose who gets, gets to stay and gets to go? That's the point. I don't. And I want to make sure that this law is fair. Uh, we have a blanket ordinance that says if you uh, fall within these parameters, you have an opportunity to apply for that license, but it's not guaranteed. The challenge is that many of these places that are now illegally occupying the city, because there's nothing in state law that allows for dispensaries, these operations, more than likely 90% of them will have to shut down. Drive through dispensaries. Is that allowed under your audience? Uh, ordinance? I think it's the craziest thing. Yeah, we, we did not put forth uh, anything in there that allows for, we actually prohibited drive-through uh, uh, provisioning centers. Uh, we've getting some pushback from that as well, but you know, that'll be part of the debate. It's now the two uh, bills are, the two ordinances are in the committees, and we're hopeful that it comes out unscathed. Uh, but we're getting some pushback from some uh, patients' right advocates. And let me just say, again, I've talked to folks and they've said, you know, what if I have a patient who can't, who's not as mobile? You got to think the individual got to the provisioning center somehow. And you also have to understand that each building has to be ADA compliant. So that whole argument that because, you know, you have a patient that can't be, that's not as mobile and they need to have the drive through, I think that's a ridiculous statement. Well, let me tell you what I would have done had I been in your shoes. I would have taken Del Rey. Old bombed out Del Rey in the sight of the bridge, I would have made that the marijuana hot zone. I would have only allowed provisioning centers right there. Right there, would have built that place up. When marijuana is potentially, uh, potentially legalized, that would become the new Amsterdam. I could see Canadian citizens coming over there to party. You'd have a new entertainment district. But we'll let you go the way you guys are going right now. I think my colleague, Council Member Constantino Lopez, may give some pushback on that one. Are you sure about that? <laughs> I think so, but we're working together. Politically correctness, Mr. Hood. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> Councilman Tate, we're going to keep watching. Thank you for fighting for us. Thank and you. I want to come up into your district before this year is over. Come on over. We're doing a lot that of great things. That far northwest side is an amazing area. You're moving. And perhaps we can figure out what to do about that golf course. Uh, we're working on that, too. I want to hear about that. All right. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'll re be right back with my good friend, Paul Welday. We're going to talk about the legalization of marijuana, but we're also going to talk about the Republican primary, which comes up March 8th in Michigan. We'll be right back.